Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Nick Tan Chats, my magic and mostly mentalism review show. My name is Nick Tan and on today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the B3 envelopes put out by Radek Hoffman. So hi guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Nick Tan Chats. Uh, as always, just a quick minute to thank all my subscribers out there. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, thank you for watching my videos, thank you for your comments, your emails, your messages, and most importantly, your support as well uh, in helping me keep this channel going. And of course, again, if you're not yet a subscriber, you know, but you've been watching my videos and if you enjoy the content, all right, if you get value out of my videos, uh, please drop me a like, drop me a subscribe as well, hit the bell notification button as well so you'll be notified uh, every single time I upload a new video on YouTube. So let's get down to the review. Uh, just about a week ago, Radek actually dropped me an email to ask if I would be interested to have a look at this item of his on Penguin Magic called uh, B3 Envelopes. Now, first of all, uh, whenever I see the word envelopes in the title of a mentalism item, it immediately gets my attention because I love envelopes. All right? I love envelopes so much, a little too much, I think, um, to the point that I can probably safely classify myself as someone who is afflicted with an envelope fetish. So, uh, having piqued my interest, uh, I headed over to Penguin Magic to have a look at the trailer and the ad copy and immediately I wanted to do the review because of three things. So number one, as I mentioned, uh, it dealt with envelopes, all right? and I love envelopes of any kind, you know, envelope work, gaffed envelopes, uh, anything to do with envelopes, I love. Secondly, it deals with an effect that I quite enjoy and I perform uh, quite often, even until today, uh, even in my virtual show as well, I also perform this effect and I'll tell you what that effect is in just a short while. And the third point is I saw Mark Paul, all right, Mark Paul uh, in the trailer uh, giving a video testimonial about how much he loves the product. And so these three things in, I told Radek, give it to me, okay, I'll, I'll do the review for you. So what is the B3 envelopes? All right? Now the B3 envelopes is actually a set of three envelopes, all right? a set of three gaffed envelopes that will allow you to perform a triple prediction mental epic style routine. Now the term prediction is often quite loosely thrown around uh, in mentalism, all right? but I think it's important to make a distinction between what is a prediction and a divination. They are both very different effects, all right? To me, they have both very different effects. For example, if you were to ask a spectator to, you know, pick a card, and then you write something down, and then when they show you the card, you know, you show them that, you know, you guessed correctly, that is not a prediction, right? That is a, a divination because you kind of divined what the card was. Whereas if you wrote something down first, and then have them choose a card, and when you show that it is correct, then that becomes a prediction because you, you know, you committed yourself before the event took place. So while mental epic is often described as a triple prediction effect, um, sometimes the way people perform it, I think it's important to have in your mind what the effect that you're performing is. So mental epic, right? Uh, it's a classic of magic and mentalism, uh, but for some performers, you know, uh, myself included, when you talk about mental epic, there will be three main problems that we have with it, three main issues that we have with mental epic. So the first issue is that huge slate, all right? You know that slate, right? That huge compartmentalized slate uh, whose existence you cannot really justify. I mean, why on earth would you have a slate that looks like that to begin with? All right, and secondly, uh, it deals with the third piece of information that is used in a mental epic routine, right? Because typically, the first two pieces of information are very free, right? They can literally be anything in the world, not limited by any boundaries or anything like that. And then suddenly, for the third piece of information, you know, it suddenly becomes very limited in scope. Like normally or typically people resort to using a deck of cards and they have a card selected somehow. Now, don't get me wrong, I mean, the revelation of a playing card, all right, is, can be strong, all right, it can be strong. However, when placed side by side next to two other effects, which are obviously much stronger, uh, then the card reveal starts to pale in comparison to the first two. All right, also, for example, you know, if you were to just look at me, you would think that you know, this guy's a pretty, pretty good looking guy. All right? But if you were to suddenly put me beside people like Tom Cruise or George Clooney, then obviously, suddenly, I start to look suspiciously like a gargoyle. 
All right, and the third issue with Mental Epic for most performers is, you know, that last part of the method, uh, just before the reveal, there has to be some, shall we say, reorganization that has to be done. I won't spell it out exactly, but uh, I'll give you a visual representation so you, you know what I mean, all right? There are like two realities, or one is like this, and uh, one is like this, all right? So this is how it normally is uh, during the routine. But at the end of the routine, uh, you know, we kind of need to do this kind of a thing so that uh, both realities match up, all right? That, that, that kind of a thing. And to handle that, uh, obviously, if performing with the huge Mental Epic Slate, the Slate takes care of that part for you, you know, almost automatically. But if performing without the Slate, you know, methods involving index cards or envelopes, there normally has to be some other kind of uh, sleight of hand or some handling so that you can achieve that intended outcome. So over the years, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, all right, I've taken a look at many uh, versions of uh, Mental Epic that have been released that have tried to move away from that huge prop with the slate. There was a Mark O'Bron's Mental Epic pad, which still is uh, a Mental Epic slate, but you know, it has been updated so it's a more you know, normal, organic looking version. Richard Austin has got a lot of work on uh, Mental Epic. There was Epicard that was released by Trick Shop. Uh, the Mental Epic Envelopes by uh, Andrea Rizzolini. Uh, Wayne Dobson released uh, a version just with index cards alone, which I, I, I quite liked. Uh, it was called TLC, all right, in his book WD40. And of course, uh, there was also the Ritchie Technique, all right, which I believe used envelopes uh, released by Doc Hilford. So in 2015 as well, I released my own version of Mental Epic uh, called Epic, all right? It's available as a PDF, still available uh, until today. So if you'd like to pick that up and support me, uh, please uh, get in touch with me. That is a routine that I still uh, regularly use even until today, you know, right? For my virtual shows and uh, even on small stage shows as well. I'm very proud of that handling because I think I've worked out a way to, you know, just perform Mental Epic with three index cards and there is no confusion as to whose piece of information you are writing down at that point and everything at the end cleans itself up. So it's a handling I'm really proud of. So let me tell you exactly what happens uh, in the performance of the B3 envelopes. So at the very start, the performer will uh, display three envelopes, okay, and they are numbered very clearly one, two, and three, okay, on the on the face of the envelopes, one, two, and three. They are like marked with um, a sharpie or some kind of a marking pen. So in typical mental epic fashion, uh, you elect uh, one spectator in the audience. They are to think of of something, all right. Uh, you then remove a, a business card, one of your business cards. You write down your thoughts. Uh, and then, you know, you cover it up, sight unseen, you then place it into envelope number one, all right? So it's clearly shown that envelope number one is being used. The business card goes into envelope number one, it is closed up and it is isolated uh, in full view, all right, uh, in a glass. Okay, and subsequently with the second and third spectators as well, this is repeated twice more. Uh, the second spectator is asked to think of something, you take another business card, you write down your thoughts, it is placed sight unseen into envelope number two, again placed into the glass, and for the same thing for the last spectator, you have them think of something, you take your business card, you write something down, and it goes into envelope number three, okay, sight unseen, and that envelope is also placed together with the other two. And at the end, just before the reveal, you remove the three envelopes, you know, you spread them out, Again, they are still seen to have one, two, and three written on them. And then you do the reveals in succession, starting with envelope number one, all right? So they clearly see again envelope number one. You turn it over, open it up, remove the card, and you're seen to get a hit over there. Next, envelope number two. Clearly, they can see number two written on the envelope. Uh, you turn it over, open it up, remove the card, and uh, you're seen to get another hit there. And of course, the final envelope, envelope number three. Okay, again, the envelope bearing the number three, uh, it's opened up. The business card is removed and you are seen to get all three thoughts exactly correct. So when you purchase the B3 envelopes method, all right, you will get uh, a video download. It's a one hour and just under an hour and 20 minute video. And on the video, uh, Radek will take you through how to make the envelopes, how to prepare uh, something else that you will need for the effect to work. He will take you through how to handle the envelopes. And then he will share with you three routines that he performs with the B3 envelopes. Uh, the first routine uh, is a routine called Game of Chance. Uh, the second routine is a routine called uh, Lost Connection. And the last and final routine that he shares is a routine called Random Mysteries. So I really like the B3 envelopes. You know, I like this method a lot. Uh, I like it because of the clarity that uh, it offers, all right? Because you're clearly using three different envelopes which are clearly labeled one, two, and three. And each of your 
you know, your divinations or your impressions or your predictions, however you're presenting it, is inserted into the correct envelope. They can see envelope number one, and then you turn it around like that, and then you insert the card into the correct envelope before it is isolated. So the sequence of events is extremely clean and uh, you know, there's no confusion as to which envelope is which. Also, just before the reveals, when you pull out the card from the envelope, you can still show that it bears the correct number uh, for that particular spectator. So if, he, if that spectator knows that their envelope is number two, you are clearly seen to be removing their card from envelope number two. All right? So there's no confusion at all as to what has just taken place. The method is also extremely easy to use. Um, it's very, very clean and it's, it's very clever the way everything works out. Uh, and I also like it because there is a kind of a test conditions feel to it in using the envelopes and isolating it in the glass. All right, my own handling of Mental Epic, uh, yes, I have stripped away the envelopes and I just use the bare minimum of three index cards. However, the compromise is that I have to be holding on to the three index cards at all times uh, during the whole routine, right? During the writing and I, you know, flip to the next one and I write. So everything is in my hands. Whereas in this particular handling, after you have committed to one piece of information and is inserted into the correct envelope, okay, it's seen to be the correct envelope, it is then placed into a glass, all right, it's isolated. So from a presentational standpoint, it is now impossible for you to add to it or change what you've written down. You are really seen to be committed in that glass. So there are pros and cons to every kind of a method, but this one offers uh, some conditions which I really like. So I have made my own set of the B3 envelopes, all right, but I've made some alterations to it uh, to kind of, you know, make it more suited to my kind of uh, performance specifications. And I had a, a Zoom chat with uh, Radek as well, just to share with him my ideas and to tell him about the changes that I've made. And uh, I think he seems to approve, which is a great thing. Now the basic method for the B3 envelopes, the design of, of this particular type of gaff of envelope is not, is not new, all right? It's not new, it's based on existing ideas and uh, Radek himself gives you the correct source. But the changes that I personally made to the envelopes, all right, the B3 envelopes, I think it's more closely related to something invented by Sid Bergson, all right? Uh, that's all I will say about that. So all in, again, uh, I really like the B3 envelopes, you know, and if you are a mentalist and if you enjoy low-tech stuff, uh, really clever approaches to methods, and if you especially like methods dealing with envelopes, and if you enjoy performing mental epic, then I think you will also enjoy uh, the B3 envelopes. If you're interested to pick up a copy of the B3 envelopes, you can do so uh, over at penguinmagic.com. On the next episode of uh, Nick Tan Chats, I will be doing a book review all right, uh, Luke Jonas has sent me uh, one of his books uh, called Away With Words. So I'll be having a look at that uh, with you guys on the next episode. So that's all for today's episode. As always, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I will see you again on another episode of Nick Tan Chats.